Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Web Trip. Uh, today we are interviewing Adrien Faguet, who is the CEO of Skate Lab. So let's get started. Can you please introduce yourself, Adrien, for us? Sure, thank you, Paola. Uh, so for myself, I've been in crypto like since uh, almost 10 years. Uh, so yeah, started like quite early because I, it, I guess it's like a luck. Uh, I knew like uh, one of the founder of Ledger, and that was uh, actually uh, like the, you know, already like the hardware wallets um, manufacturer. And um, it was like very early, like even before that, like in, in Bitcoin and just like say, hey, you should probably like get some uh, because I was like just like playing video games and I was like kind of like, yeah, the, the internet culture. Um, so yeah, I said, oh yeah, this, this looks pretty cool. Uh, and actually this dog looks even more cool. So it was Dogecoin at this time. So it, it, this is how I started like it's crypto. And then three years after he told me like they were looking for more people in Ledger. Uh, so I just um, came into the company in a 2017 at this time, uh, and then just like grew up in the company for six years. Uh, during this time, um, I created like a staking company, uh, which is called uh, Stake Lab. Uh, basically, it's a mostly native staking, but um, there is also like some liquid uh, staking solution inside and restaking. It's pretty new, like in Ethereum, but uh, it's not new in Cosmos ecosystem. And then I joined uh, last year uh, XDeFi Wallet, which is um, a powerful multi chain wallet uh, that you can use. And then we decided, like quite recently, uh, that they have like a product inside, uh, which is a swap, and um, that uh, how would you like to bridge anything to anything? And the thing we is like uh, it's pretty hard like to develop it internally because it needs like a lot of resources. Uh, so we decided just like to extract it and create like a side company, uh, which are, are leading right now. Uh, so we are finishing over funding right now. No. Oh. Uh, super big, uh, you know, experience in this in this industry. If you had to explain a hardware wallet to a kid and also what is taking to a kid, how would you explain it? Uh, so yeah, no hardware wallet. It's pretty simple. You can see it like a USB stick, uh, basically. Generally, like l the ledger one would like a USB stick. So you can just like connect it to your, um, let's say, like a phone or even like a desktop. And basically, the idea behind it is. How do you to generate uh, your passphrase, a uh, seed phrase, or whatever you want, which is basically the access to your account? Uh, you could imagine like you have a bank account, uh, you connect it with like uh, some numbers and then like a pin code. And uh, you could imagine like here it's like words. Uh, you have like 12 or 24 words, which is the access to your account. So if you give it to someone, then you lose. Uh, basically your money. <laughs> That's simple as that. Um, and the only thing that different uh, like hardware wallets to hot wallet, the hot wallet is basically like an extension that you're going to use. Uh, it's like, you know, browser or mobile phone. Um, and the difference is that you generate uh, offline uh, your uh, account, uh, your difference. Um, and it's very important to understand like the difference. Um, if you're like, let's say like in internet, you go like into your hot wallet, you generate these words and imagine that they, uh, there is something like um, probably like a malware or whatever, or just someone that um, got access to your um, a computer or just internet or whatever. And you got access to this world, then probably you will put money on it, play with it and like it's normal. And you don't know when, but it's going to arrive and then you're going to lose your money. Um, and the second thing um, is same as this. For example, you have like a hot wallet. You are, let's say like MetaMask is the most known one. Um, let's say XD5 because I'm world there. <laughs> uh, and then you connect with a, a D app. And this D app uh, is like um, a malware. Uh, it's like a, a fake one uh, that someone just like want to extract from value. Uh, then in this case, when you're going to sign the message, uh, you're not going to see anything because it's just like the, the front end. And basically, people are just like not really much. Uh, if you say like, oh, you're going to gain one ETH, the guy is going to say, oh, I'm going to gain one ETH. Let's click. So to sum it up, like um, a hardware wallet is actually custodial, meaning that you own it uh, and you own your, it's more secure as well than a wallet that you will have online. Uh, and it's something that you really own, like you own all the access to the world of Web3. Uh, and because... Some people listening to this podcast might use, you know, like central services. On the DApp side, um, if it's like a, a, a wrong one, then when you sign with your ledger, let's say, you can review like on your screen and say, oh, it's literally not what I want to do. Like the action I want to do is not this. 
And generally, it's something like sending your full money to an address that you don't know. <laughs> yes, email <laughs> this. Cool. Give me this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Ledger is a, is a really great company, and uh, uh, we might uh, dive back into that after. And also, could you maybe briefly explain what staking is? Uh, maybe like to a very, maybe let, let's say a, a eight years old. Uh, it, it's simple. Uh, let's say that you, uh, you have like uh, some, some, some hamburgers, like people like hamburgers. Uh, I have an hamburgers. And then um, I say, oh, I'm going to put it like in the fridge, uh, just like to uh, wait for it okay. um, and, and just like eat it like tomorrow. Uh, staking is basically the same. You take your hamburger, you put it in the fridge. And then it generates like portion of the burger. Uh, so like when I will come back tomorrow, I will still have my burger, but still like like some pieces more of the burger. So mm -hmm. I can eat just like the, the little pieces of the burger and I still have my burger. Uh, or I can just like take back my burger and, and eat it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Super nice. I, I love the, the, <laughs> the burger uh, <laughs> analogy. That's very powerful. Uh, so you seem very, very uh, joyful and excited about what you're doing. And uh, that's, that's such a pleasure to, to witness. And uh, what do you especially like uh, in your jobs? Like you, de you describe many positions, uh, but what makes you excited about this industry? And what do you like and you know, keep you up um, in, in a day? I, I guess like just the ecosystem itself, because it's like a lot of technologies, uh, like a lot of like different ones. There's staking, restaking, there's bridge, there is like, I don't know how much things at the same time, uh, like the blockchain, like how they evolve each time, like each ecosystem got their specific technical inquiries. Uh, and then you're know, just like in the middle, you try to follow like everything. And uh, as more and more people come in, uh, it's like, impossible just like to follow everything yeah. and i guess like it's just enough uh, for like type of people like me uh, that just want like i guess like um, having our brain just like full of like information and then we are like happy with that <laughs> i guess th this is it like uh, just not having like a, a boring phase uh, without something to do and just like oh what i'm gonna do because i'm just like i don't have anything to put like in my brain yeah, uh, this, yeah there is no activity for it no, I, I love that because, uh, I mean, it can be overwhelming, like the amount of information which is coming every day and like all the news and like to keep up. So I guess many people are actually not encouraged to join the industry because of this specific point being there is too much to know. But to you, it's an excitement. And, and so it's an excitement. Yeah, yeah that's that's. Yeah, nice. I, I guess it's it, it's for different profile. Like um, and there is there is profile that literally don't like to work too much, uh, even in the industry. I guess it's totally depending on. What you want, but if you want to have like the, the full experience, I would say uh, I prefer like to leave it like at like hundred um, percent. And I think what is very cool about uh, your experience is that you have a real three hundred sixty, you know, viewing and knowledge. I will say of many parts of the industry being like maybe the more hardware part with hardware wallet, also like uh, the exchange part. Uh, now like uh, DeFi mostly, but also you mentioned um, before that. Uh, uh, I mean, the correspondence we had before the interview that you worked on this project, uh, a meme project called uh, Shiwawa Chain. We, we we haven't talked a lot about NFT yet uh, in, in this series. Uh, we had like one but mostly about NFT, but um, I will be interesting to, to see your take and uh, uh, what, for instance, makes this NFT collection unique to you, uh, the one that you can see on Shiwawa Chain. We created like a Chihuahua chain also, which is a, a, a Cosmos main chain. And uh, it was done because um, it's like Dogecoin. Uh, on, on Dogecoin, you try to promote like the proof of work of Bitcoin. Um, mm. on, and on Ethereum, you're going to have Shiba. On Solana, you're going to have like Weave and Bank. Um, like Base, they're going to be like Toshi. Like every ecosystem got uh, like meme coins. Uh, and on um, Cosmos, uh, as it's like very, very tech oriented and uh, doesn't have much like culture. Uh, we put it like to our chain, which is basically a Cosmos chain. So you can do the same as the other chain. So smart contracts, uh, development, uh, you can do like almost anything you want uh, because it's permissionless and um, an open source. So people can build like a like marketplace. Um, they can build a smart contract. Um, so you, obviously we did uh, some um, some work like on that. I can share if you want. These one are the MetaWawa. Uh, so basically, it's one collection that we build uh, in partnership with Passage. Uh, Passage is very interesting. Actually, they are building like kind of like a, a giant uh, ecosystem of metaverse uh, where you can join in a single click, no need installation or whatever. It runs like uh, with the Akash computing, so it's fully decentralized. 
Um, and uh, we created this collection to have like the access to the metaverse. And I guess it's pretty fun because we, like I see MemeCon like that. Uh, you try to have like complex technology mm -hmm. and try to um, make it understandable like for people. So basically here we try to say like, oh, look, you have an NFT. This is what uh, an NFT is. And what do you have with an NFT? You can have like almost anything you want. Uh, it's just like building like a, a access. Um, and then um, to access the Wowerverse, uh, which is the, the metaverse built on Passage, wow. you need this NFT. <laughs> yes. You need this NFT uh, to, uh, to, to access it. Uh, so basically it's like um, a, token, a token gate. Um, yeah. If you don't have like the the, the badge, uh, then you cannot uh, enter. It's the same like here. You don't have the NFT, you cannot enter. We also have like a um, few, few different ones. So here is a, like another one connection. So this one is living on Stargaze. Uh, it's called like the Wower Punks, uh, just like a, a tribute to the the, the really known punks um, like on Ethereum. Oh. We decided just like to make them as a Chihuahuas, <laughs> pixel Chihuahuas. So yeah, no. The idea is like we we, we try to work with uh, different platform. Um, so Stargaze is one blockchain, Passage is another, and then we just like spread the culture of meme uh, around the ecosystem. Um, yeah, very cool. And you said um, what I like what you said in what you said is that you said it was a to um, an access token, um, and so because sometimes you know we have like some people also saying like NFTs doesn't serve any real purpose. So. Can you just reflect on this access token thing so, you know, we can get a, a deeper understanding on, like, you can actually do stuff with NFTs, yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> no, yeah, no, for sure you can. <laughs> it, it, it's actually, like, how it works, like, for um, getting value, like, to the, the thing. Like, you could imagine, like, even, like, tickets, um, like, for a specific event. You could just, like, mint an NFT, uh, get access, like, to the concert uh, with it. So you can prove that you, are, you own it with your uh, wallet, actually, uh, which... If you just have, let's say, like, uh, my phone, I have, like, a QR code, uh, probably just, like, the QR code I just, like, flash from someone, and I'm just going to share it. They never just, like, check IDs, to be honest. <laughs> um, but with the wallet, like, the difference is, like, I can prove this is mine, and uh, I don't even need my ID, because, like, my ID could be linked directly, like, to my wallet. So, uh, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty okay. Um And actually, uh, like for NFTs, like the token gate, it's basically the same. Uh, you want to enter the concert, you need the ticket. Uh, you want to enter the, the Warverse, you need the NFT to, to get inside. And it's even easier like in this way because um, as it's like directly linked with the blockchain, you connect your account, you're going to check if there is like the NFT. And if there is the NFT, you're going to let you uh, have the access. And if you don't, you can just say, oh, if you want the access, just buy one. <laughs> buy one on the market and see if there is like some sellers. Super nice. So, you know, it serves a purpose and uh, you can check it out, guys. The, the Chihuahua chain is actually very funny. I, I thought it was hilarious. So <laughs> thank you for that, Adrian. Oof. So my other question is, is, is something that we ask to, to many of our interviewees uh, uh, in this community, especially like, um, what do you imagine, imagine sorry, Web3 um, will encompass in the upcoming years? And when it comes to all the technology supporting Web3, uh, what is your utopia and what is your dystopia? Uh, when it comes to 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 these technologies, honestly, like uh, I'm just like, yeah, just feeling like uh, there is something. Like since since I started, like I know there is like something. We are just like trying to explore, like oh, we can just like uh, change uh, scenes and make them better. Obviously, like I guess, like the the wrong path is that uh, it also like um, give a lot of ideas uh, to scammers <laughs> and bad actors, uh, which is like the wrong part because it it. It creates like a lot of like oh let's say like there is like people they they, they probably don't get like uh, what we are working on uh, and then they see like uh, information and say like oh yeah another guy just came or oh yeah there is like another thing like uh, they 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 find and said like uh, like uh, people like taking drugs or whatever or like like arms um, but yeah I guess like the the thing is like um, as it's more transparent as well um, it's easy like for uh, media's to control that uh, in their favor. Um, like for governments, I guess. But the thing is, uh, I guess at some point uh, we are like taking like time to time more and more values and more and more power. So I guess at some point they they are not gonna be able like to fight anymore. And and this is like the the thing. Like there was like recently, it's pretty fun because the wallet is called uh, Samurai Samurai Wallet. Uh, it's not fun because it's a privacy wallet and they get arrested um, as same as Tornado Cash uh, because they were doing like. Um, 
private uh, wallet so it wasn't like um, trustable and they just like charged them of criminal accusation uh, because potentially they were doing like uh, wrong stuff with their customer but the thing is like yeah we, we need privacy anyway so and i think it's crazy because every time you know um you try to mention or to develop a real privacy and i mean respecting the right to anonymity in a sense you will always have the arguments being like oh it's kind of um, a hiding place for um financing you know drug market terrorism and all the bad stuff and and I think it's 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 been since even the inception of Bitcoin a real issue in the industry. And this argument is used as a target to actually say like you cannot develop anonymity and like privacy wallet. But actually, you know, like and I'm sure you you're well aware of that, but we have like some mechanism which allow you to 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 function in privacy while respecting transparency, which seems like totally incoherent when you think about it at the first uh, moment, but uh, it actually works. So I guess like yeah, this is this this is the problem like for me, um is uh Let's see, like, oh, oh, like, yours gonna get us like into something. But for me, it's it's like they, they cannot just accept it, uh, of course, because they they want to control. And the thing is, uh, they have to accept it uh, at the end. So, yeah, it's gonna be a uh, yeah, twenty years, I guess. Uh, and probably hardware wallets, as mentioned, are a very good target for them because uh, having an hardware wallet is basically uh, th- this was something like when I I joined Ledger like a long time ago, but. They, they said at this time that um, Alloa Wallet is basically having a Swiss bank account in your pocket. So basically, you cannot do anything to that. Uh, if I have my own Alloa Wallet, uh, just stocking my money on inside, then you cannot do anything to me because uh, I own the money. It's not the banks and you cannot do anything with. So, you know, in this series of, uh, of interviews, uh, we are always asking um, the, the person just before you to prepare a question um, for the next interview. Oh, really? So they don't know who you are. Um, even if it's a small ecosystem, we generally don't disclose like the identity. So the question we got uh, the last time um, is actually super interesting, but maybe it's still a bit philosophical. We'll see. What's the thing that keeps you up at night? And what's the thing that makes you excited when you wake up? For the night, uh, what keeps me up? is uh, trying to have time uh, to just like read everything um, like because during the day there is like so many interaction like with um, people uh, like um, with your companies uh, so you have like to work actually <laughs> when they are like awake uh, because like let's say like at eight or nine um, there is like most of the people that just like have their own life um, and it's like the good time uh, like for me to just like take time for me to read um, what's happening uh, like uh, what's the, the the new trend on this path? Uh, what's uh, going on like on this uh, ecosystem? Uh, and uh, I'm also like a, a big DJ, so I like to take like times to just like interact with protocol uh, to use them, uh, make some trading, um, just like use uh, like stuff like um, like if I was like a, a QA engineer, like <laughs> trying like oh is it working well? Like oh, how does it, these things work? Like oh I break it off. Like, and, and then just report it like to the team we work with, but yeah, it's essentially like this is what keeps me up like dur- during the night, and um, in the morning, um, what's basically just uh, make me uh, wake up is basically the cats actually <laughs> because they, they, they are yelling, <laughs> so I don't have much time to to, to sleep, and they they just like uh, yell to me, just say, "Hey, wake up, bro! <laughs> you have to work again," and um, and there we go again. And, and, and again, like at this time, it's you take your phone and uh, it's, it's it's again the, the same. You read all the paths um, that you missed during the night because the crypto ecosystem is not like um, something that just like stops sometimes. Mm. It um, doesn't stop anytime. Yeah. So you just read what's like, as we are like in Europe, uh, basically what I've been doing like the um, Americans uh, during your night. So how do you manage to actually uh, take a break? from time to time, from this very fast moving, fast facing market, because at one point you need to take, you know, a holiday, like uh, take a break, rest your mind. Like, uh, how do you do that? Uh, I think there is like two different things. Um, some people prefer like to have like a very, very yes. like strong and like full deep, um, like works uh, like for months and then like take a break uh, outside and just like disconnect completely. I guess on my side, it's more like having a, um, a, a good way uh, to to live like every day, like eat clean, do sports every day, and uh, try to have like a um, 
some time to sleep actually and some time with that family. If you manage to do that, I don't think you need the event vacation uh, because it's fine. You're just like clear in your head. But yeah, if you feel a bit like uh, too much, uh, yeah, taken by uh, mm. by everything, I guess like uh, generally what I do is uh, taking like um, a week or where there is like either mountains uh, or just like sea uh, because um, it's beautiful. You can just like look at the view. It's completely different than the screen. Mm. <laughs> Actually, it's not too much different. But, uh, <laughs> I will. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing some people saying, uh, "Actually, I have a mountain on my on my uh, you know wallpaper, so I'm fine." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I no, no, actually, it's okay. It depends on where you live, but sometimes, like, people just, like, live in, let's say, like, in Paris in close apartments. And on my side, I'm pretty lucky because I, I, I have, like, uh, taken, like, uh, um, like, places where I have, like, a space. Uh, like, I can rest. I can, like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, uh, outside uh, in my yeah. home. So it's, it's enough, like, for me, like, yeah. Everybody, sorry, needs to find some balance. And, uh, but I just think in this very fast pacing ecosystem, you need to find a way to sometimes disconnect your brain because, it's not possible. Like, I don't know if you need like to. Who do you admire and inspire you in this ecosystem? Um, I guess like one is like uh, I'm coming from like the gaming area. Um, one of the other is like uh, Faker. Uh, Faker is like one of the most known guy like in um, uh, League of Legends. I guess it's like it's, people call him like God or whatever you want uh, because the, the guy is like uh, completely um, like so professional. Uh, it's, it's having like the perfect way like a uh, very concentrate, uh, always like uh, hard working, um, not, not a single time like uh, having a, a little like space. Sometimes you think like he, he's gonna like, it's been like 10 years or something that he's like at the highest level of the game, but he's still like buying one of the best or even the best uh, just because of this like uh, hard working pass. Uh, so I guess it's like something I really like to um, consider is like when you do something you wanna be the best. And I did like, um, do, did this like when I was like doing gaming to reach like a rank one uh, in Europe. It was basically you have to work like um, if, if you need to work like 16 hours a day, then just do it. If it's your goal, just do it because it, it's only hard working. If, if you do, let's say like uh, 14 hours, then probably someone's going to do like 16 hours and beat you. So it's the same with crypto. If you want your company to be like better than the rest uh, in the area you work on, then you just have to work. <laughs> So yeah, th this is a one idols like give me like this, I guess, like pass um, um, to the hard work, I guess. And there is like few other one, like, uh, I guess, like inspiring, like in the ecosystem is, uh, I guess, like Nicola Baca, which was uh, one of the ledger founder uh, that we uh, worked with a very long time um, during this. And we still like very good friends uh, speaking a lot. Uh, I guess it's like one of the most he knows everything like <laughs> you can talk about like anything the guy is already like aware of all the thing and he's like very very funny because mm -hmm. it, it turns everything into like a calling yeah i guess like smart people can do this and i guess like there is like some kind of people like that that can manage to uh, do this for me like this guy was like kind of rick uh you know rick and marty mm -hmm. and basically this is like the the the, the crazy scientist that knows everything is like uh, a bit tired about like everything going on because it's like, oh, guys, you're all stupid. Like, <laughs> So you were the Morty? I was pretty much the Morty. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> uh, very cool. Thank you for these two names. Uh, I, I really hope it will, you know, push people to, to check them out and, and also seek the same inspiration that, that uh, it brings you. Do you have a question to pass along to the next interviewee? What was like the, the first connection, like with someone that makes them just like a declick, let's say like a, oh, uh, like which like which person is like this guy that introduced him um, um, like to the, the ecosystem um, because sometimes it's like a totally random guy or sometimes it's just like a celebrity or whatever or just like he saw something like in internet I don't know like it's, it's good to know like a other person just like get into it thank you so much Adrien for being here today and for your energy uh, very excited to have you on this podcast um, thank you Paula yeah and see you soon <laughs> <laughs>